yeah. some sound checks. We'll see if we're live. I think we are. Hey, can anybody hear me? Forgive me, I have a cold. It's RD. Can we get a sound check, please? Oh, I know I am because, of course, I didn't mute my mic. Normal. That's how we start every show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a yes if somebody can hear me, please. I got to check, make sure my mic's not muted. I have an elephant that lives upstairs. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, hey, Jeannie, can you hear us? Can you do a sound check? Are we broadcasting and live? And can you hear us? Yes. Thank you, Linda. All right. So I've got this on the board, you guys. What we're going to be talking about today is what was called an intimate sample in the courts. And we think that's quite an interesting name, why they didn't choose medical sample. Um, but they chose the words intimate sample. Hi, everybody. We'll, we'll, we'll stall for a little while, get you guys a chance to catch in, you know, get in your seats and get comfortable. But we're going to be talking about um, quite a lot today. And one of the things we're going to be talking about is an intimate sample. So this is what the courts were given, was an intimate sample for the identification of the victim. They didn't call it a medical sample. It was called intimate. And that's what we're going to talk about is the intimacy of this sample. Where did it come from? Um, could it have been gotten the way it was? And we're actually going to have we have two opposing sides that is going to be coming together here Um and discuss it. And you guys are going to be able to shout out and we'll incorporate your questions right into what I'm going to call kind of like a friendly debate. So we have, um, we have quite a surprise for you because we did make a phone call and we're going to be sharing that with you. And we'll explain what that phone call was, who it was to and why we made it when we get a few of you more in here. I can't talk tonight. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I have a terrible cold. So I'm going to introduce everybody here that we have with us tonight. So right now we have Bumblebee, who you all hey. know I call BB. Hey, how you doing, Bumblebee? All right. You, you ready for this? Sure. Why not? It's just another day, right? Yeah, <sighs> just another day talking just a day about at work. intimate yeah. sample. Yeah, yeah, just another day at work. Hey, Kat. Hey, Jeannie. Kimberly. Linda. Sammy, I see ya. Lori. Crockett. Hey, Crockett. How you been? Hey, Julie. So, quite a few people are coming in. Hey, Pep. Hey, Pep. Hey, hey, Pep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what we're going to be talking about tonight, um, once we're done talking about this... This is going to lead right into Silkman's video. Dr. Silkman has put out a video for us, and it's called Jumping the Gun. And I think you'll really enjoy listening to this video. Now, it's a little bit longer than normal. Um, pause it if you need to. Take a breather. But let me tell you, this is high impact. But um, we've all had, hi, Jane. We've all had um, moments where we've questioned the authenticity of the identification of the victim in the um, Stephen Avery case, who is Teresa Halbach. So we've got a few more people on board. Um, we're going to say hi to Sammy. Sammy, you on? I'm here. Hello, hello. Thank you hi. for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, we're 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 gonna we're gonna kind of. Uh, moderate questions, I understand. So we'll be monitoring the board for them. Um, Dr. Silkman should be arriving soon. But until yeah, then. It's his morning. Yeah, yeah it's he his morning. Be it's kind of early in the morning. He should be waking up soon. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Disco Pervert. Hi, Jeremy. How are you guys? Thanks for joining us. You'll have to forgive me, you guys. I have a cold that you can hear. Um, I'm fighting a, a very messy little cough here that's in my chest so yeah I know thank you Crockett <laughs> hi Debbie hi Jeremy um, yeah what we're doing you guys um, is we're going to 
a lot's going to happen tonight, actually. This is going to be um, a defining moment in the case because there's been a huge question asked for a long time, and that is the intimate sample that they used as the, the main standard identification of the victim was considered to be, quote, unquote, intimate sample when it was in court. It wasn't called a medical sample. It was intimate sample. And we're going to be talking about this a little bit. How, what was it that they first in, uh, initially used specifically? Um, could it have been, could, could they have obtained that sample um, in the timeline? And were there laws to make sure things were in the right place and so forth? So with that, um, we're up to about 23 people. And I think that every, <laughs> get out the sweet tea with lemon. Uh, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you guys so much. Hey, Sheila. Um, and we'll so, be going to Discord later after the movie, too, to talk. Yeah, so that's kind of the game plan. Bibi, thank you. Um, we're going to do a chat with you guys here, which is going to lead right up. We'll give you a few minutes before the movie starts so that you can kind of get situated. And then um, we're going to go ahead. It uploads at 7 o'clock tonight, and that's U.S. Central, Standard Central, Central Time for U.S., um, so if you're in Australia, that's like, uh, nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, well, depending on what part. Yeah. Depending on where yeah. you are there. Um, yeah. <laughs> for us, if, you, if you happen to get into discord and get into the, um, puddle text and you're not sure how to use the rest of it, just say hi in there. And one of us will help walk you through to get to the chat. Beautiful, phone, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, everybody's really super helpful in there. Um, yeah, so the the game plan, you guys, is we're going to be, um, we're going to give just about two more minutes, um, and then we're going to get rolling, and it's about the intimate sample that was used to identify the victim in the Habach case. So this is um, this is a big deal because this is where they say this is where they got the identification of Teresa Habach. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, we'll go ahead and kind of get rolling here. Um, in the event that Dr. Silkman isn't on for the live, um, I'll fill in for his part. But you got to remember, I will be muting my mic when I cough. So there might be pauses for me. Um, as we go but <clears throat> so the intimate sample was not called a medical sample but was actually considered to be a pap smear and this was the victim's pap smears and um, it wasn't an agreement that was associated with any sort of medical release from a hospital saying that these were her pap smears it was an actual under the table agreement between the prosecution and the defense that they would not question the authenticity of the pap smear. Yeah. Okay, so before yeah. before we get going, BB, I hear you clear in your throat. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna get this little part out first, you guys. So what Do we've you hear done. Me? Hi, Hi, Dr. Snowman. Yeah, <laughs> my voice is, is getting uh Wayne, it's waning. Oh, okay. So, Dr. Silkman found this lovely document here for us. It's um, this question is, and uh, I'll have to see where this is from, but it says, Question and regarding that process, were you asked to identify, obtain, and thereafter have transported to Wisconsin Crime Laboratory again for analysis? What's referred to as an intimate sample of Teresa Havoc. Notice, you guys, how they don't say medical? <laughs> yeah. Answer, yes. Question, were you able to identify and were you able to find such a sample? Answer, yes. Now, this is fast bender answering, okay? Question, could you tell the judge how you did that, please? Answer, initially, I looked into Teresa Habach's health and medical history to see if we could find some such samples. And I was able to locate pap smear slides that she had provided or were taken from her at the Bell and Health up in Green Bay and were being maintained at the Bell and Health lab in Green Bay. 
They identified three or four such samples that were taken during the past five years. They maintained those samples for five years. So we wanted to do a little <laughs> investigating. So um, what we did is we called the Bellin Health Lab in Green Bay, and we asked them <laughs> some questions to see if they literally would have maintained those samples for five years. So let me go over. Now, well, well, somebody called them. Who was that? Tammy was that? Tammy. Yeah, Tammy called them. You might recognize her voice. She's my um, <laughs> ducky twin sister. <laughs> um, so you're going to have to give me a minute because we've got to find exactly where there was... We didn't edit this call at all. So hold on. Let me see if I can uh, make sure everybody hears this. Let me see. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We'll just let it play. It's going to be all stupid. Okay, now I'm doing a check. Can everybody hear that in the group? Can you hear the phone call? Hello, everyone. Were you guys able to hear that phone call? Were you guys, BB, were you hearing it? No, I can't from here. Yeah. And I have you to were? stay. So fun. No, oh, I have I to can't stay hear in. It. No, I have I'm to stay and hang out or I Hold can't on. Hear. I'm going to do a test. Hold on. I'm going to test. I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to play something. See if you can hear it. And three, two, one. No. No. I can't hear anything. Okay. We're going to try to do it with my microphone. Well, I, but we're, I'm in Hangouts. I can't be on YouTube. Yeah. So no, they I, might be able to hear it. Okay. We're going to try it. No, no, yes, yes, no, I heard nothing. Okay, we're going to try it this way. We'll see if this works without my hang without my headset on. Oh, now I can. Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, so, BB, you can hear it? Yep. Anybody in the crowd hear it? Yeah, we're calling. Okay, they're hearing it now. Yeah. I heard it. Okay. Can you hear the phone being dialed? Okay, I'm testing to see if you guys can hear the call. No. Let me try it now. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, it's not going to work to share the call. Okay, what I'll do, you guys, what we'll do is let me stop the call. Okay, what we're going to do is we will, can you hear me now? I can hear you. I can. Yes. Okay. We'll up the. We'll have to upload the call for you guys and give you the link. That's what we'll do. There's not a link yet, Roll. I'll get you guys a link though. We'll get it set up and in the descriptions. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying to get hooked back up. Okay. Everybody can hear me now. I think. <laughs> yeah, no. I can hear you. Can you? Yep. I'm in two places at once now. I'm on my speakers and my headset. <laughs> well, it is what it is. We'll Technical go. difficulties. We always have them. At there least you have a, a, at least you haven't put the star in timeout yet. Yeah, we haven't put the star in timeout yet, you guys. So we're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Thanks for showing up. Let's get rolling. We have 30 minutes to knock this out the block.
And what it is, is we, we just got done talking about the intimate sample and what we're referring to as the pap smear. So we gave a call, which you guys are going to have access to. We called the Bellin Lab that actually was the one to handle it. Now we got one part is the lab tech answering. And when I asked the question, it, how long that they usually retain it? He said approximately two weeks and then um, that they got rid of them. However, after I talked to him, I had for, or after that, I had further questions he couldn't answer. He forwarded me to his supervisor. Now, his supervisor stated that um, there was a federal law. And this federal law required that all clinics maintain the pap smear, which is a, systolo a systological sample. Yeah, that's a big word for me. Um, systological sample. Um, so it's a five-year deal. If it's a histology sample or something like that, it's 10 years. But because it's a cystology, that means five. So what I did is I put the information in the library for you guys. Um, but we're going to grab it real quick, and we're going to look at what the federal law states. And then we're going to look at what the state law states. And we put it under physical evidence, DNA. And then it's right under pap smear, and it's the document. Now, the federal slide retention law, we're going to let it kind of clean up here. You'll see that this is absolutely, if you follow this entire thing, and like I said, this is in the library for you. It talks right down here on 7IA, retains histology slide preparations for at least five years from the date of examination. So that's the federal law, okay? Now let's back up, and we're going to review what the state pathology systology. Yeah, okay, so it's down, let's see, it was right here. CLIA stipulates that laboratories must retain cystology slides for a minimum of five years, histopathological slides for a minimum of 10. So no matter e any way you look at it, we have to debunk the theory that Fassbender could not have gotten pap smears from the clinic because he could have. The possibility is there. Both yeah. state and federal law require that these pap smears are held for five years. So in theory and literally, logically, he could have went back and actually got those. But when we did talk to the clinic, the person handling the slides that's in charge of disposing of the slides was not the supervisor that knew the law. So it seemed like we had a breakdown in communication of what the law was, what the policies were, because as I began to interview, which you'll have access to that call, when I would ask him a question, um, he gave the answer around two weeks. I kind of even pushed a little far farther and said something along the lines of, have you had that, would it be weird to have it longer or something? And he was like, kind of, yeah. So he was in disagreement. His statement was not the same as what the administrator said. So we see a breakdown in law. And so I'm going to turn it over to Bibi and Silkman, who are kind of on opposing viewpoints. And then I'm going to pause for myself, and I'm going to let Sammy read the questions, and she'll jump in. I'm going to go get a drink. All right. See you guys. All right, Silkman, you go first. Uh, well, the way I see it, um, I don't see really any issues here at all. Um, uh, I didn't even realize that it actually was Fassbender that got the uh, original uh, pap smear slides uh, from the Bell and Health Laboratory at Green Bay. Now, I just want to state that he, um, Teresa Holbach, um, gave these samples or had pap smears uh, done in 2002. So they're definitely within the realm of the five-year window. Um, now, if that's the law, and it appears to be uh, very much so the law, they've got to keep these um, samples for at least five years. And I can really understand that because when you're taking samples, uh, especially a pap smear sample, 
um, the pathologist or the doctor examining them really needs a record of the original sample because uh, normally what happens now I'm not an expert in pap smears please I'm uh, I'm not a gynecologist or anything like that but my wife um, had these procedures herself uh, and essentially what they do is they keep it as a reference sample so they look for uh, changes potential changes that may occur uh, in the epithelial cells of the cervix. So that way, uh, if there's any issue or dispute, they can always go back uh, and check an original sample. And that's why uh, there are strict laws that they've got to keep these uh, samples for at least five years. So my understanding is that there um, are many different ways that laboratories keep their samples. Um, they could either keep it in um, in a liquid form or uh, as uh, slides, which uh, I believe what they used to do is once they took a sample, they used to spread it on microscope slides um, and then examine those slides. So essentially what they're looking for are, are any histological changes to the way the epithelial cells look. Um, so I see no issue uh, in, in this case and in actual fact, those uh, pap smear samples were critical because they were used uh, as a DNA exemplar. So uh, Cherie Colhain from the crime laboratory was able to uh, extract DNA from the uh, buckle, uh, not the buckle swab, sorry, from the um, pap smear. And that's important because it's used as an exemplar because um, it, it, I think it's pretty obvious, well, to me anyway, that uh, Teresa Holbach was cremated. Essentially, there was no blood sample or proper tissue sample in which DNA could be extracted from. So uh, in a way, it was fortunate that uh, the pap smear slides were still there because otherwise there would be no DNA exemplar, which means that if you're obtaining forensic samples uh, from the lab or anywhere else, there'll be nothing to compare it to. So okay. for me, yeah. Let, let's let BB kind of get in of here course. a little bit. Of course. Okay, BB. Okay, well, yeah, I do have to hand it to you that it is feasibly possible they could have been there because it is a Zola. But. Once they got to Sherry Colhane, I still have a problem with it. A yeah. huge problem with it. And I have a huge problem with the whole gentleman's agreement thing. And uh, all yeah. the way down to where they called it the intimate sample instead of a medical sample. Uh, correct. But I believe the intimate sample, sorry, BB, for cutting in, was from... Kratz, I believe, himself. Yeah, it has to sample. be, come on, that has to be from the mind of Kratz, my guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. That, um, that I fully agree. That had to yeah. come for, out of his mouth. Yeah, it sounds just like him. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I still, the gentleman's agreement, I have a huge problem with. And, and we all believe, I think pretty much generally, that Sherry Colhane tampered with stuff in the lab, uh, the whole DNA on the key, the whole DNA on the hood latch or the hood, whatever, post. Yeah. Um, and once you draw a line and you do one form of planting or another, then where's that line at? You know? Yeah, that's, and, that's, that is true. And given the knowledge that of what Zellner tweeted two tweets ago about that uh, Bambetic, Bam, yeah. Bambi, um, Bam, whatever. Right. Kat Hammond wants to say, I have a huge problem with the gentleman's agreement as well. Sweaty Sweat himself came up with that. Yes, I, I think so. I, it was all him. It was all him. He even has said it in a couple places that it was all him. That yeah, came up with the gentleman's gentleman agreement, and he even expected Zellner to maintain the gentleman's agreement that he had with Beauty, and said how nefarious or whatever it was of Zellner not to keep that. 
Silkman, I have a question from Disco Perfect for you. And you. she asked, would saliva not suffice as DNA exemplar follow-up, say, a toothbrush? Uh, yeah, look, there's no question. You, you don't have to rely on, say, the pap smear to isolate DNA from. But here's, here is the big problem. If you use um, a toothbrush a chapstick, you cannot absolutely guarantee that for a start, you're going to get a single DNA profile. Uh, you may get a mixed DNA profile, it may not be pure. Uh, you can't, it's a little bit difficult to prove that, look, that DNA actually belongs to Teresa Holbach. Um, and because she was cremated, unfortunately cremated, and there was no uh, tissues or samples in which you can derive a DNA sample from, the best sample is to use a medical sample that they know is one, pure, two, it's from Teresa Holbach, and it's in a medical laboratory. So therefore, the reason why they came up with the gentleman's agreement is they didn't need ultimate proof that it came from Teresa Holbach. They all accepted, look, this is a medical specimen. It came from Teresa Holbach. It was stored in this uh, Bell and Health laboratory. Do we all agree? And they all agreed, rightly okay. or wrongly. But there was an email sent. I there was an email apparently sent on February the 4th, 2007, and they all agreed, including the defence and the state, that no one was going to question the pap smear. Okay, so Jeannie uh, Monroe says, or Moreau, they don't always follow the rules in this case. It's hard to cancel right. anything exactly. out. Exactly. One says two weeks, the other says five years. Wouldn't they need a subpoena? Um, uh, you want me to answer that? Well, well actually... We're legal, um, so, yeah, we don't have a... Back in the day... Um, back then, we didn't have the HIPAA law um, that protects our privacy and such as we do now. And most likely, it would have just required a signature of the next of kin or emergency listed person. So if Karen signed something over, which I believe that she did, um, then that would be plenty for the subpoena. However, you're right. Um, now, I want to talk I want BB to address this part, if you would, and this has to do with your your niece. Now she's not in a lab that's in a clinic, correct? No, she's in a lab that's in a hospital that they don't do like outside uh, for doctors per se. Uh, okay. Yeah, but they she she was doing wet wet samples, which she calls them wet samples which are pap smears, and um, she went to school for this, and they never once taught her about that federal law, that state law, and they didn't know where she would get a job when she left from there. So shouldn't they be teaching that to the lab students here in the state, that there is such a law? And yeah. her um, clinic, she says, maybe because it's a hospital and not a doctor's office, isn't doesn't have to play by the same rules and maybe that's Roll. why they dispose of them at two weeks right Roll griff griffion says why and i'm going to answer this one real quick why is a gentleman's agreement necessary about a toothbrush it's not a vibrator not like a vibrator it wasn't it was actually for a pap smear roll but Correct. they wanted to keep it quiet that they had collected yeah. It was considered an intimate sample. And but then the, when they call it intimate sample, it, but makes it was me never wonder. the to clear the question up, the gentleman's right. agreement was not actually about the toothbrush at all. But we do know it was collected indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um now remember if we actually don't have that DNA exemplar, um, how do we actually have a case? Well, I think Butin should have argued that point into the ground because he is supposed to be there to get Steve off at all costs. He's collected high pay for this job, and he shouldn't be making gentlemen's agreement with the opposing side. He has a legally binding agreement with Steve Avery. 
That's yes, right. I agree with that wholly. Yep. This is imperative what Disco Pervert just said. I want you all just to take a second and listen to this. Well, let's get intimate. Could it be likely that she had been sexually active before the pap smear? Could there be a possible mixed profile? See, so even if you're saying, Dr. Silkman, that the toothbrush is a risk, more than likely you have an individual that has the risk of being sexually active when she produces a pap smear as well. Yep. Uh, there's no question that the sample's pure because when you do a DNA profile, you can't hide the fact that it's a mixed sample. So therefore, when a DNA profile is done, uh, there's also what's known as a sex marker. So therefore, you would know whether there's the presence, say, of sperm or anything else. So because her profile came up as X, 1X, it means that, of course, uh, she's female, there was no Y present. Furthermore, no other alleles <coughs> were present in any of the loci. So therefore, the actual DNA sample obtained from the pap smear was clean, pure. What if there would have been two females? Uh, it would have meant that you had two females that were 100% genetically identical. In so, other in other words, words it was clone. one. Otherwise, <laughs> it would have been like Sherry okay. Colhane's and hers on the bullet. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it's mystical, like, mystical yeah. Jinx wanted to say what else or ask what else was included in the gentleman's agreement other than the pap smear? Well, we know for sure the vibrator was. Yeah. Because that, that was the thing that he called Zellner out about yeah. was saying um, – and some other YouTuber had done a thing where she had called somewhere and whatever. And um, he had said that it was appalling that Zellner wasn't honoring this gentleman's agreement that he had with beauty. Right. Which why he would think she would have to, I don't understand. And uh, that's just part of their sanitation of Teresa where they made her St. Teresa and Scott Fair says they were ineffective counsel, period. Yes. Pardon my pun. <laughs> yes. And, and I feel oh, beauty. Don't and make I, me laugh. Don't make me laugh, Scott. I, I feel build, beauty really dropped the ball with this gentleman's agreement. Mary Mary wants to talk about panties. Um, you know, that's true. We have some weirdness with underwear. <laughs> yeah. We've got the we've got the, the panty raid day. Okay, so they specifically stated that that's what their intent was, was to grab DNA when going to the home. So what did they grab? They grabbed dirty underwear. But why did they grab clean? Why did they get three clean? If they're going for DNA, why on earth would you get three pair of clean? Well, I've got got my theory. Please share with us. Um, Well, (coughs) my theory is that Now, remember, yes, it is conspiracy in nature. I believe they were going to actually try and set up Stephen, likely Stephen. Brendan came a little bit later on in the scene where he basically um, involved himself in these so-called crimes. I believe they're going to set Stephen up for rape. And that's why they needed clean underwear. And that's why they asked, kept on asking Brendan uh, what happened to the underwear. What yeah. color was the underwear? Where's the underwear? I can reach that far and think yeah. that you're right on. Well, yeah. of course. Yeah. I will yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not, not conspiracy no at this idea. point. We're, no. It's not conspiracy. Yeah. It's just yeah. theory. Yeah, it, um, it Jeannie is said when I said panty, she said fetish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Again, yeah. I said uh, personal collection. Personal yeah. collection, sweaty, sweatish, sweaty, sweaty. Sw- I, I'm stuck on the word. Ben's sweaty. like, get me a few pairs of some clean ones, then. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly believe they were they were going to set Stephen Hi, up Ms. for rape. I do too. I think that this uh, there was a lot um, being planned, and they just needed the um, unwilling and unknowing um, actors. You know, the actors 
are the people that were witnesses that didn't know they were playing a part is what it's starting to feel like. They just had to get them to behave a certain way. And they also had to bend enough to use whatever the witness came up with because it was not retractable in most cases. So they had to work with it. What a mess. Right, exactly. And I also feel... That once Sherry Colhane got, let's say they are Teresa's pap smears, and Fassbender went and collected the actual pap smears. Fassbender could have switched them with a, a set that he had gotten from that he wore Carmen himself. Botwell Oops, or anybody well? else. <laughs> and um, or Sherry Colhane, once they got to the lab, could have switched them out with samples that they could have gotten from Carmen Botwell. And the can, bones are done at exactly the right time to still be hers. Can, can I just make a comment? Yep. Um, now, I, from a scientific point of view and from an integrity point of view, I don't see any issue with the way Fassbender picked up the um, samples. However, I do agree with BB. what would have prevented a lot of uh, misinformation, suspicion, is, hey, show us the paperwork. All you need to do is to show the slide because the slide would have uh, a specific ID number, uh, so it can be traced back to Teresa Holbach. Show us the paperwork because apparently um, three to four slides were collected. Not one, three to four. So Teresa may have given several pap smears or maybe just one in 2002. And so several slides were made. And I don't see anything nefarious in that. However, uh, echoing what BB said, it would have been great if we can see some paperwork. No questions asked. Here's, here's the slides. They're hiding the identity again. Well, yeah. They are. Well, there are, they could have very easily, if let's say everything's on photograph the photograph the slides with anything, the name on anything, them. Anything, just the heading from the hospital releasing the yeah. medical stuff. But yeah. instead of any paperwork that backs up whose slides these are, correct. It's they just like we're sneaky, supposed to just yeah. a sneaky behind the scenes gentleman's agreement. Allie Nicole says, I know in some states they put your name in the government's data bank for CDU if you have an STI or STD, stuff like or vice versa. So for intimate samples, can't they look her up that way to track her? And then she had all states, five, though. Right. Is yeah. Sheila states, oh, my God, I threw up in my mouth a little bit. Give me a visual. A sweaty crat sniffing the undies. <laughs> uh, thanks yeah. for the visual shared oh yeah. lord <laughs> so there's, there's got to be paperwork there has to be paperwork available and, um, and even with paperwork it's still they are doing so many shady things yeah that, well that look and, baby, and Graham I have says to, real quick I, I want to throw agree. this in Graham says that's why they tried to get Brendan to say what color underwear she had on yeah because yeah. they collected uh, five different colors. I, I mean, uh, four, five, six, seven, seven different colors. Candies. Yep. And I bet I bet you Colburn would have shaken some other cabinet and, oh, my God, there goes a purple pair of underwear. Yeah. We never saw yeah. that before. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I know. I know. And I know that's that was exactly why we cannot trust what they say yep. at the lab. Yeah. Because of the key, because of everything. Well, it, everybody's uh, quite comfortable with the thought that they planted the key. Even Kratz said, well, if, if they just did so you guys know key, five minute, five minutes and then we're off because we have a movie coming on. Yeah. Yeah. E yeah even well, Kratz was our little five minute warning. Yeah. Yeah. Ho Thank hopefully you guys that for joining mm -hmm. us. We're going to trail off here in about five minutes, kind of like um, because yeah. the movie will be starting. So I just want to personally thank you, Dr. Silkman and BB and Sammy Pleasure. and all of you. No problem. For coming tonight. And um, there's a lot more to follow on this. We're just kind of like seeing the tip of the iceberg of the problem. Right. And you can yeah. always join us in uh, approximately an hour in, in the, the puddle, puddle room. Chat. Yeah, following the movie. Yeah, we'll be there. Yep. Following the movie, we're going to go to dis 
Discord. Now you're free to do um, a voice chat there, which is a live group chat where you can all talk. Um, or if you're shy, voice shy, you can just listen, mute your mic, and you can type in the room. And those listening to the call can read what you're saying. And you can still be part of the call like we are here. So can, right, can and I if you're having if you're having problems working it out, just type on the wall and let us know that you're having a hard time getting in, and somebody can help you. Yeah. yeah. Can I can I just say very quickly, um, I I agree with what BB saying. In fact, my analysis for item FL I think exposes the shenanigans that were carried out, and we yeah. have to do this in a systematic manner, uh, just to show the type of uh, wheeling and dealings that went on in that crime lab. And thank yeah. you everyone for your excellent questions. Yeah, very yeah. good questions. And um, we want to thank you guys for being a part of our research as we go forward. I know this wasn't exactly what we all want to hear for a break in the case, but anytime it's truth, we're seeking the truth, whether it goes our way or not, we need to know it. Um, and it does appear that it is very, very likely that Fassbender would have very easily been able to get these slides that, that the pap smear. Unfortunately, the hangup is that no paperwork came with it. And that's a big, yeah. big hang up as to why they would not have just had something saying, this is Teresa Hallbox instead of we're supposed to trust them. Yep. Look what they did to Brendan. Correct. Right. Yep. Now, I'm going to leave the call and go ahead and watch the movie with you guys um, since we'd be muted here it's anyway. The gun, and it's starting at 7 o'clock p.m. And it's Dr. Silkman's movie. And it's going to be a lot of information about your crime lab, your um, nefarious little big-haired woman at the crime lab. Side eyes. Side eyes. She's a... Uh, Miss uh, Cool Hand McCoy there, and it's about the the bullet. So stay tuned. It's absolutely fascinating. It's a little bit um, of one of those things where if you don't watch it, you're going to miss out understanding a lot on why um, FL is such a, an instrumental part of this case that Zellner is going to be focused on. So going forward, this this video will help you understand a lot more. So forgive me for Thank my you. cold. Sorry, guys. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. I thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Dr. Silkman and BB. Pleasure. As well right. as everybody else in the listening area. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Now I hear crickets. <laughs> all right. I'm leaving the call. Okay, love. If Bye. I can figure out how to get out of here. See you later. Hope you join us in the puddle for chat.